Hey everybody and welcome back to another Crack and Packs video. I am your host, Mr. Bevers. Today we have a box of Scars of Mirrodin, one of my favorite sets. Um, mainly because I got into it, I got back into Magic right around the time of its release. So I have a lot of fond memories playing this with my buddies, just in in-house drafts and that kind of stuff and picking up some stuff and... There it is. Seal's broken, you can't go back, right? You can't go back. There's Koth. Our Koth guy. We'll put him over there. So I'm going to be filming this in three sections, uh, just like I did for the previous box in this trap. So we're going to start with the first row, and we'll work our way down. So I'm going to put that off to the side there. You can just see into it. And let's get started. Let's get started. Some of the chase cards in this set are Mox Opal, Platinum Empyrean, Black Cleave Cliffs, uh, Scytherix. I want to say his name is. So there's a couple. There's a couple that we're looking for. Um, there's quite a few that you can get that are nice. Now, of course, most of the higher price cards in this set are the mythics. There aren't a lot of rares over the ten dollar mark. There's a couple, like Black Leaf Cliffs is a rare. It's you know over ten. Uh, you've got Copperline Gorge over ten. You've got Contagion Engine, and then you've got a couple others that are hovering near the ten dollar mark, but not quite there. So anyway. We'll go over the uncommons as well. Clone Shell. There you go. You've got a little imprint 2-2. Two -two. So imprint is when it comes into the battlefield. You basically do something with it. So in this case, it's look at the top card of your uh, top four cards of your library. Exile one face down. Put the rest on the bottom. When he's put into a graveyard from battlefield, turn the exiled card face up. If it's a creature card, put it into the battlefield under your control. It's kind of cool. Kind of a neat little hidden away kind of card. A skin render. This is a guy that most people should know, I think. Uh, 3 3 for 4. And when he enters the battlefield, put 3 1 1 negative counters on target creature. This was the set that brought about uh, Proliferate. So that's why there was a lot of handing out of negative 1 negative 1 tokens. Uh, we don't see that too much anymore these days, the negative one tokens, but it was big back in the Scars of Mirrodin set. What with Infect and all that goodness. So we got a Painsmith here. I remember this guy being very good um, in this set in Limited. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, you may have target creature get plus 2 plus 0 until, and gain death touch until end of turn. So a 2-1 for 2 that gives your guys death touch. And our first rare is a Semblance Anvil. So there you go little three mana cost artifact with an imprint. When it enters the battlefield, you may exile a non-land card from your hand. Spells you cast that share a card type with the exiled card cost cost two less to cast. So there you go. We got a nice little spirity wolf token there and a nice looking land. We'll put those off to the side there. There's our uncommons. You guys don't really need to see the commons and uncommons, right? Ooh, these packs, they're getting a little old, I think. Hard to open. The glue's getting a little stiff, I guess. My goodness. Ooh. All right. Okay, so we've got a foil in this pack. Razor Hippogriff, 3-3 three, three Flyer. Turn target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. You gain life. Pretty good for an artifact set, you know. Barbed battle gear. Equipments. So again, there was a lot of equipments in this set due to the fact that it's on Mirrodin. Mirrodin was known for, the original Mirrodin block, was known for artifacts and... Why is it focusing on that bird? <laughs> Stop focusing on the bird, you know. So there it is. Plus four, negative one. We got a bellowing... Tangle Worm, so it's a 4-4 four, four for 5 with Intimidate. 
Other green creatures you control have intimidate. Pretty, pretty all right. Oh, there it is. That's nice. Worm coil engine. Always nice to see. It's like a fifteen dollar card right now. It looks like. So there you go, 6-6 six, six for 6 with Death Touch and Life Link. And when it's put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put a 3-3 three, three colorless worm artifact creature token with Death Touch on the battlefield and a 3-3 three, three colorless worm artifact creature token with Life Link. So it basically splits into two and you get one with Life Link and one with Death Touch. Was very good back in the day. And our foil. Okay, so our foil is... These are out of the shot. Let's put them into the shot. How about that? Sorry about that. A planes. And a mirror. And the foil is right at the back. That's interesting. A foil revoke existence. Man, the foiling on this. Look at the... Can you see this? It is, it is gorgeous. Holy moly. That is a gorgeous foiling. Man. They were not messing around. They were not messing around back in the day with the foiling process. Let's let's get into the next pack here. Let's open this guy up. Whew, there he is. All right. Uriok Edgerite. So this was a guy with Metalcraft. Metalcraft was a thing as long as you control three or more artifacts. Um you get Metalcraft. So this was a 2-2 two, two for 2 that would get Double Strike. Very good in White Weenies. Trigon of Infestation. Uh, they had a Trigon for each color in this set. So the green one uh, enters the battlefield with three charge counters on it. Pay 2, put a charge counter on it. Pay, uh, sorry, pay 2 green and tap it, put a charge counter on it. Pay 2 of anything, so 2 generic. Tap it, remove a charge counter from it. Uh, put a 1-1 one, one green insect creature with token with infect onto the battlefield. So there you go. Corrupted Harvester. So 6-3 six, for 6. Sacrifice a creature. Regenerate this guy. And we got a Carnifex Demon. So 6-6 six, six for 6. Fly. Carnifex Demon enters the battlefield with two 1-1 one, one counters on it. No, sorry, two negative 1-1 one, negative one counters on it. Wow. Yeah, so uh, so he become, he comes in as a 4-4 four, four for 6, but if you pay a black and remove a counter, you put a negative 1, negative 1 on all other creatures. On each other creature. So you can essentially cause your opponent quite a lot of grief, especially if he has a lot of little rinky-dink dudes. And there's the poison counters. I remember I have a huge stack of these downstairs still from back then. A huge stack. Oof, the glue on this. Yeah, it's really, really old and stuck together. Here's the Trigon of Rage. This is the red Trigon. So, two generic, remove a counter. Target creature gets plus three, plus O oh until end of turn. Lifesmith. So, whenever you cast an artifact spell, you may pay one. If you do, you gain three life. So, this is like the Painsmith, only it's Lifesmith. Um, and speaking of the Painsmith, there it is. So it's a little, they like little things. This one's obviously a little bit better just because it triggers without you having to pay an additional cost. But three life for one generic mana can be, can change the game around. Um, however, there was problems with Infect and life not really meaning a lot. <laughs> a Steel Hellkite. So this is an interesting one. It's a, it's a 5-5 five, five flyer for six. You can pay 2, and it gets plus 1, plus 0 until end of turn. You can pay X, destroy each non-land permanent with converted mana cost X, whose controller was dealt combat damage by Steel Hellkite this turn. Activate this ability only once each turn. So it allows you to essentially wipe their board for X. Um, yeah. This guy was a pain. That guy was a pain for people. I mean, he's an artifact, so he's not hard to... There's a lot more removal for artifacts, um, but he's very good, very good. I know one of my buddies still plays him in one of his uh, kitchen table uh, magic decks. 
Thrumming Bird, a 1-1 one, one flyer for 2. So whenever it deals combat damage, it pro proliferates. So proliferate is what I was talking about before. Proliferate is the ability where you would essentially you choose any number of permanents and or players with counters on them, and you give each another a counter of the kind that it already has. Necropede, so a 1-1 uh, one, one for 2 with Infect. And when it's put into a graveyard from play, uh, from the battlefield, you may put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. Sorry, negative 1, negative 1 counter, I should say. Ogre Gear Grabber. A 4-4 four, four for 6. And when it attacks, gain control of target equipment and opponent controls until end of turn. Attach it to Ogre Gear Grabber. When you lose control of that equipment, unattach it. Yes. So essentially, when you swing with him, you get to take an equipment that they have and put it on this guy. So he becomes bigger than a 4-4. Four, four. Oh, there's a Ratchet Bomb. I don't know if it's really worth anything anymore. But this card was worth a bunch of money back in the day when it was in standard because this card was a card that people just did not like. So, two mana cost, tap it, put a charge counter on it, tap it, sack it, destroy each non-land permanent with converted mana cost equal to the number of counters on it. So you could change the number of counters on this card a whole bunch during your turn. And uh, it could really mess with people could really mess with people and there was a lot of instances and things that proliferated so like you could change the, the the counter total on your opponent's turn if you didn't like whatever they played or whatever they did and then you could just blow up whatever they're doing it also worked really well because you could put it into play and sack it with zero counters on it and it would blow up all the tokens on the table so if someone had a whole bunch of mirror tokens or whatever it wipes the board another clone shell Flesh Allergy, Sorcery, 2 black and 2 generic. As an additional cost, sacrifice a creature, destroy a target creature. Its controller loses life equal to the number of creatures put into all graveyards from the battlefield this turn. So there you go. And Ember Smith, so here's the red version of the artifact creatures, or the creatures that benefit from artifacts coming into play, I should say. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, you may pay 1. If you do, it deals 1 damage target creature or player. Oh, and we got an another Mythic. So we got 2 Mythics so far. Now, not one of the more expensive mythics. In fact, I think it might be the cheapest mythic in the set right now. Um, I can't quite tell, but there's what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's nine mythics I can see on my screen that are over $7, and this isn't one of them. <laughs> so, there's that. Um, so, Molten Tail Masticore, four mana, four, four. At the beginning of your upkeep, you sacrifice it unless you discard a card. Pay four, exile a creature card from your graveyard. Molten Tail deals four damage to target creature or player. Pay two, regenerate this guy. So there you go. Regeneration does not work if you have to sacrifice him. So that's kind of a little bit of a downside. So you have to discard cards to keep him alive, and then you can pay two to regenerate him. But it only works if you're if you're not sacking him to his own ability. The glue on these packs, man. Alright, there we are. Arc Trail. Little two mana cost sorcery that deals two damage to target creature or player and then one damage to another. Acid Web Spider. So a 3 5 for 5 with reach. And when it enters the battlefield, you may destroy target equipment. Palladium Mirror. It's a 3 mana cost 2-2 two, two, that taps to add 2 generic. It's probably too colorless now, would be my guess. And we got a Molten Psyche. as our rare in this pack. So 3 mana cost, a 2 red and a generic. Sorcery. Each player shuffles the cards from his or her hand into his or her library, then draws that many cards. Metalcraft. If you control 3 or more artifacts, Molten Psyche deals damage to each opponent equal to the number of cards that player has drawn this turn. So there you go. Kind of a neat little haha, <laughs> draw some cards and then take a bunch of damage. I don't think it saw a lot of play in limited or standard for that matter, but but then again, I wasn't really following standard at the time that this set was out. Um, at least not heavily. Since I was just getting back into things. Exsanguinate. So there you go. Two black and X. Each opponent loses X life. You gain life equal to the life loss this way. So we play a lot of table 
uh, kitchen table magic, and and uh, so we end up playing a lot of games like of assassins or generals or whatever you want to call it, um, and someone plays this, and it it really hurts because everyone loses X life and then he gains a whole bunch of life. Arc Trail, we saw that one. Halt Order, so an instant for one blue and two generic. Counter Target Artifact Spell, draw a card. And our rare here? Oh, alright. So, uh, Izuri, Renegade Leader. Um, so he's a 2-2 uh, two, two elf for two green and a generic. Pay a green, regenerate another target elf. Pay three green and two generic. Elf creatures you control get plus three, plus three, and green trample until end of turn. So he allows you to have overrun basically on the board. Kind of cool. Kind of cool. Oof. Let's keep... Oof. These packs. The glue on these is getting real stiff. Alright. Trigon of Corruption. So there's the black Trigon. So, basically, if you remove a counter, you get to put a, one, a negative one, negative one counter on target creature. Razor Hippogriff. Mirror Galvanizer. So, I remember this. This was an interesting one. I played it in one of my mirror decks back in the day, which is other mirror creatures you control get plus one, plus one, but you can pay one and tap this guy to untap each other mirror you control. It was interesting with the mirror battle sphere. That's what I used it with. Um, because the mirror battlesmith is you tap all your mirrors to give it plus X plus zero, and then they take X damage, and then you tap this guy after, like, you, you basically tap all your dudes and then untap them all so they all have vigilance, which is kind of cool. And Argentium Armor. So this is a six mana cost equipment, which says equipped creature gets plus six plus six. Whenever a equipped creature attacks, destroy target permanent. So it lets you just blow up stuff with a big creature. Most people don't let you get it equipped, or if they let you get it equipped, uh, the guy doesn't live very long. <laughs> so there's a foil thrumming bird. Again, the foiling in this set is just beautiful. I don't know if you guys can see that. Is this? There we go. Oof. It's so good. All right. Well, we got two packs left. It looks like we got two packs left here in this, in this for this video. Oh, my goodness! This glue. Flesh Allergy again. Heavy Arbalest. So a three mana cost equipment. Um, equipped creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. Equipped creature has tapped this. This creature deals two damage to target creature or player. So basically, you have to uh, equip this to a creature that isn't tapped each turn if you want to untap the creature that, that has it equipped. Culling Dias. Two mana. Sacrifice a creature, put a charge counter on Culling Dias. Sacrifice Culling Dias, draw a card for each charge counter. And we got a Grind Clock. There you go. So Grind Clock is one of the ones that people like for mill decks. Uh, put a charge counter on this. Target player puts the top X cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard, where X is the number of charge counters on Grind Clock. Island, Golem... Foil Island. Ooh, shiny. Foil Lands are always great. I love Foil Lands. Um, especially, like... Yeah. Especially some of the older sets. The art is just amazing already. And then... Foiling it on top is just... Beautiful. It's beautiful. Oh, we've got two... We still... We, that was only the third last pack. We've got two more. Oof. All right. These packs are really hard to open. We got a skin render. Slice in Twain. There's a uncommon we haven't seen yet. So two green, two generic, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Draw a card. Instant speed. Contagion clasp. So this is another one that's good for proliferating. 
Um, it's an artifact that comes into play. When it comes in, you put a negative one, negative one counter on target creature. Pay four, tap, proliferate. And there's another mythic, a mind slaver. So again, not one of the top mythics. <laughs> so again, this is another mythic that's probably under the $7 mark. So this box has been a little disappointing in that aspect. However, we're only like a third of the way through, so you never know. But three mythics so far is pretty crazy. We're not we're only a third way through the box. Um, and we've got three mythics. So I mean like I don't remember what the mythic count was back in the day for these boxes, but I recall like the mythic count in each box being a lot lower than it is now. You get a lot more mythics per box these days than you used to get. At least from what I recall. Alright, so we've got Golem's Heart, which is a two mana cost artifact. Whenever a player casts an artifact spell, you may gain a life. Necrogen's Scudder. So a 3-3 three, three flyer for 3. And when it enters the battlefield, you lose 3 life. But it's a 3-3 three, three flyer for 3, which is just absurd. Because most of the time, 3 mana cost flyer is a 2-3 at best. Uh, Rusted Relic, which is a 4 mana cost artifact. But if you have Metalcraft, it becomes a 5-5. Five, five. And we got a Contagion Engine. So there you go. Contagion Engine is, is a $10 ticket. So there you go. So six six mana. Uh, when Contagion Engine enters the battlefield, put a one one negative one negative one counter on each creature target player controls. Pay four, tap, proliferate, pr proliferate, then proliferate again. So essentially, for for six mana, you play this. If you have four mana, you can tap it again and give everything your opponent controls negative three negative three in one turn for ten mana. But you also get to proliferate anything you have. So if you have any Planeswalkers that have counters on them, or if you have plus one, plus one counters on anything you have, or what, or if they have poison counters on themselves, you essentially get to give them two more poison counters. You get to give your Planeswalkers two more loyalty. You get to give your creatures plus one, plus one twice if you want. So there you go. Not too bad. That's a pretty good start to the box, I guess. I mean, it's a little disappointing to see two of the low-end mythics come out. Um, we can see here just quickly. Let's see. So, yeah, Mindslaver is in the $5 range. And the, uh, the Manticore is not even on this list. So, there you go. So, the Manticore is a little bit of a bust. But, what can you do, right? Sometimes you win them, sometimes you don't. We still got a Worm Coil Engine. That's pretty sweet. And a Mind Slaver. And we got a Contagion Engine. All right, this box is starting off pretty okay. We just need to see some Black Cleave Cliffs, maybe some of the Dual Lands, basically, right? We want to see a couple of the Dual Lands, maybe another Mythic. Another Mythic would be good. Um, let's see. Let's see how what what let's see what the rest of the box brings about. But if you're watching on YouTube, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you could like and subscribe, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, and don't forget to check out my Patreon, as well as nerdvanastore.ca. If you're looking to pick up any of these cards you see me open, they're all up there for sale. So um, check that out as well. And as always, may your pulls ever be better. Thanks for watching, guys.